thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, be before I begin, I, I think uh, a round of applause is uh, really needed for the organizers. When I, when I first met the organizers and heard about Startup Weekend and wanted to participate and, become, and, and get involved, they said, sure, Mike, uh, come over at 8.30 in the morning. And I'm like, is this Egypt? 8.30 in the morning meeting? Are you crazy? I mean, this shows how serious and professional uh, these people are. So if you will, can we have a round of applause for uh, Dani, Dahlia, Hani, Triple M, Fadi, Mahmoud, Motaz, John, and Gada. They've done a wonderful job, I believe. So please, get up and stand up. Okay, uh, can I, can I, if, you're, if you're working on a laptop right now, or if you have a smartphone, please take your fingers off your smartphone and laptop. I have a pop quiz, and I wanted to make sure everybody is not cheating. Okay, the, the question is, uh, wait a minute, right here? Uh, no, no, right, oh, okay. The question is, who invented the, the electric light bulb? Was it Joseph Swan, A, Thomas Edison, Humphrey Davy, or George, uh, uh, George Stevenson? Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask for a, a, a raise of hands for A, Joseph Swan. We got uh, a couple people. B, Thomas Edison. Uh, 30, 40, Humphrey Davy. About three, George Stevenson. Nobody. And the winner is Humphrey Davy invented the light bulb. Uh, the, Davy, the Davy lamp was invented in 1809. And there was about 13 inventors who participated in actually commercializing the light bulb. Now many of these inventors received prizes, they're the top scientists, they, they became royalty, but they really weren't entrepreneurs. It really took about 70 years, 70 years before the light bulb became a commercialized product, which was Joseph Swan and, 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 and Thomas Edison. And the question is, why, and we all know Thomas Edison really created a massive business out of this. So the question is, why Edison? Why not the 13 others? Why did, they, why did not the others make money off of this? And, and the problem with Thomas Edison is you think of this brilliant man, this, this mad scientist who's in his lab, and he's working on something, and he says, Eureka, I have the light bulb. But that's not how he was. That's not really who he was. Thomas Edison was an amazing, amazing marketer. He was constantly looking for his first client when he had something in the process of innovation. He was an amazing promoter. He was always promoting his technologies even before they were released. He hired the best and the brightest, and he had a vision to motivate the best and the brightest. He was always looking over the shoulders at his competition, and when he couldn't compete against his competition, he would join them. He would form joint joint ventures with him. Thomas Edison produced 120 companies. In the US, 55 internationally. You talk about a serial entrepreneur. He's literally, I think, the greatest entrepreneur who ever lived. So the question comes, what is the difference? Who is an entrepreneur? What is the difference between an entrepreneur and a business person? It's an interesting question, and there's been lots of studies of looking at the mind of an entrepreneur. And in a, in a very recent study, um, I, I have to look to, I, to remember her name. Uh, Sarah, Sarah, uh, Sarah Vonovich from uh, the Darden School of Business at uh, Virginia University, she came up with an interesting concept. She came up with a case study. And in that case study, she gave it to corporate level executives and serial entrepreneurs to see what is the difference in the way they think to see if there's really a difference between a business person and an entrepreneur. And, and some of the conclusions she came up with that were, were quite staggering. It, it, entrepreneurs are very practical people. They think about, what can I do now to make it today? How can I survive now? They don't think about doing massive market research. They think about, let me hustle and make some phone calls and see what customers want. Let's do meetings, let's do networking. Well, corporate guys want to do market research, they want to do long-term strategic planning, they're always worried about market share. There's a huge difference between what an entrepreneur is and what your traditional business person is. And the reason for the difference is entrepreneurs have an advantage. And if you look at gurus from Drucker, Darwin to Drucker, 
You see, to survive and grow, you have to take advantage of change. And entrepreneurs, this is the entrepreneur's advantage. If you work in a big corporation, you have systems, you have processes, you have fixed assets, you have a corporate culture. All of these things drag you when change happens. And guess what? In Egypt, there's a lot of change happening right now. So now is a great time for an, to be an entrepreneur better than any other time probably in Egyptian history. Because right now, corporations are not investing. They're on the defense. They're holding their, their, their costs down, which means it creates market opportunities for entrepreneurs to enter markets like never before. Right now, we hope, we hope that these state-owned entities have to change the way they have to do business. So now is the time to talk to some of these state-owned entities and see if they'll do business with you instead of maybe some of the colleagues that they've done business with before. It's an amazing time to be an entrepreneur and statistics prove it. If you look at the United States, over 50% of the corporations were, were formed during some recession, including GE and HP and CNN. If you look at ta Taiwan, six of the top 20 companies came out during or after the financial crisis, including HTC. So now is the time to be an entrepreneur. Now, I, I, want, I know this is a complicated slide to read, but this, this slide is specifically for, for women entrepreneurs. I find women entrepreneurs are always put into training, into selling crafts, and they should not think like this. There are 20 self-made women billionaires in the world. That means these are women who created their own businesses, not with their father's money, with their own money, their own sweat equity, and now are worth a billion dollars or more. 11 of those women come from the country of China. Now, China is a big country, but it doesn't have over 50% of the population. And these are not women doing things like fashion. These are women in manufacturing, in real estate, in construction, in recycling. Women are leading the economic growth of China. Women entrepreneurs are leading the economic growth of China because they're ambitious. They're more ambitious than the American women than their counterparts. So this is to say to, 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 uh, to the women entrepreneurs, don't be typecasted in a specific type of industry. Think bigger, think out of the box, please. Now, a little bit about the Global Entrepreneurship Program because it's a bit complicated. Um, the Global Entrepreneurship Program is a State Department driven program uh, announced by uh, Secretary Clinton during the, the Entrepreneurship Summit last year, which was born out of President Obama's speech in Cairo University in 2009. The program itself is actually funded by USAID under a project called the Egyptian Competitiveness Project. That project has several components, including regulatory reform, including workforce development, access to finance, uh, workforce, and entrepreneurship. Now, the important thing is, to me, who, who are we focused on? Entrepreneurship is a very fuzzy subject. Who are the entrepreneurs we want to work with? We want entrepreneurs to be great, who think great, who want to dream great, as Bo was talking about. We want entrepreneurs who are moving, we want them to be flexible as markets and environments and technologies change, they will change with it. We need you guys to be focused. You can't think everything in the world is an opportunity. You have to choose, move, work with it, and then move on. And we want, we want entrepreneurs who are ready to create wealth for others. Microsoft created about 12,000 millionaires. These are the types of entrepreneurs that we want in Egypt. What, what are we going to do in, in our program? We're going to start growing finance entrepreneurs. We're going to start entrepreneurs by supporting events like this. We're also going to have some media training coming up so we can get the media to highlight the importance of entrepreneurship to the rest of the public to get more people motivated about entrepreneurship. We're going to have innovation competitions. And these competitions will focus on a specific issue or problem facing, facing Egypt and will hopefully connect those issues and problems to a bigger business or to the government. We want to improve the ecosystem. It's, it, unfortunately, too many entrepreneurs 
take too much of their creativity to work around their, their, the enabling environment, the business environment, instead of working on their business. So we're going to do things trying, trying to make the regulations better and try to get your, your to, we are trying to make it easier for you to start your business. And if you haven't seen the pamphlet of the, of the step, seven steps to do your business, please, please look at it. Um, we're trying to figure out how we can make it easier for you to be a legal business. So after you leave here, you, you read that form and then you actually register your business. We'll have, we'll be, we want to help and support growing entrepreneurs. So we want to grow entrepreneurs by having things like training programs taught by practitioners, people who have actually been entrepreneurs, who have done product development, who have done market entry. We'll be creating mentoring and peer support. We'll be creating partnerships with bigger corporations and government. And we'll be doing lots of things to finance entrepreneurs, helping to get entrepreneurs ready for the, the judges and financiers in front of you. Uh, we will be creating, hopefully creating an angel investment organization. We'll be bringing in uh, investors, hopefully from the region and from the US. So we have lots of activities, programs, and, and events that we want to support. Uh, the first two things that we'll be supporting, I should say, will be the Entrepreneurship Bootcamp and the Angel Network, just for people's information. Uh, we're, we're supporting events and we're interested in events you might have, uh, but I should say we have an event next, next week in Alexandria. So uh, if, if for those who are from Alexandria, if you look at uh, the website alex-ied.com, you'll find out more about the event here. Okay, here's, if you've been sleeping during my presentation, here's the most important slide. I don't know, I know Egypt's very soccer crazy or football crazy. Um, and many probably remember Paul, the, the, the octopus. Paul was choosing who was going to win a soccer match. Now we have a lot of announcers and sports experts who, who pick soccer matches, but Paul seemed to be pretty good. He even picked... Spain over Germany, which was a, a pretty risky call at the tame, time. In America, the Wall Street Journal used to, and I don't know if they still do, used to have a monkey uh, and a financial investor pick stocks. And oftentimes, the monkey would pick this professional uh, investor in picking stocks. And this is just to say, and this is no disrespect to the judges. <laughs> you might not get selected today, you might not like what you heard from the mentors. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what the judges say. If you believe in your idea, if you sat across from a table from people and brainstorming during the weekend, and you believe in these people, don't listen to us. Believe in your dream. Go forward. Don't, whatever happens out of here, just do it, OK? Please, don't listen to us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're. Uh, as, as always, when I come to Egypt, I have to upgrade my technology. We're on Twitter. We have a website, which really is not that great. We're, we're on Facebook, LinkedIn. We'll be announcing our programs, activities, uh, and, and events through this, through this uh, social media and other websites. Thank you.